Welcome everybody to Catfish Weekly, along with Chad and Josh. I'm Lyle and boys. We got two of the greats on with us tonight. I can't wait to get this show yeah. started. We're going to have a great time. We got fishing and stuffs, Mister Keith and oh. Mister Megan Grub. Man, I thought you—I thought you meant the two greats, me and Josh. And I was going to say, well, we also have Keith from fishing and stuff <laughs> and Hagen Grubs. That's oh, not what at all what I had in mind. <laughs> We're going to have a good show tonight. We yeah, are. It's going to be a lot of fun. He loves to talk about YouTube. I, Hagen can talk about whatever he wants. He, he joins yeah. Whatever he wants to talk about, we'll talk about. It. <laughs> but Keith yeah, I'm just here. Yeah, we're yeah. going to have a great time, guys. I thank you so much for, for joining us. And uh, Keith comes in and does shows with us, and we talk about, about YouTube stuff, about what you hear, right, Keith? And and um, questions and things, and if you've got them, we'll try to get them answered for you. And and I know that one of the two of these guys, if you have YouTube questions, can answer them for you. There's rarely people that's any more successful than these guys are, and uh, very knowledgeable. And let's face it, they do a great job with what they do. So uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Chad, do you uh, want to announce who is in chat so far tonight? I would love to. The one of the best, you know, followers that you have, the wonderful Fields to Water was in here first. We have a new member in Ed Johnson. We have a short, angry man named James Dockery fishing. Pebbles Robinson, what is AMA? That is Ask Me Anything. So you can ask these guys that are the you know superb superstars that they are in YouTube what it takes to make such great content we got 922 crappie barbecue creole catfish and joe newman member cat fit carolina catfish outdoors in indiana with dave scott curtis montgomery mark barnum troy from real and virtual outdoors joe buck 66 the sweet miss cindy stokes my wonderful wife and member get hooked on d fishing member catfish and crappie uh, Scroll down here a little bit more. We got Mr. Parker's Pursuits, Dave Funk, member fishing in freedom, Don Thornton, welcome, Hawk Cat Fishing, member Danny Stone Outdoors, Taylor Fritz, fishing with squirrel, and I am to the bottom there, folks. <clears throat> All right. Mark Barnum says, Chad, congratulations on Lyle not drowning you when you're visiting him. Wow. Man. <laughs> I got that news. Of, I'm sure that took a lot of restraint for Lyle. So I have news for you guys. He's still here. He is. <laughs> still kicking. I'm still kicking. I like how he's not allowed to be in your studio with you, though. I, I don't think he can be in here. He pulled it. Look, he's got that chair ready just in case I get lonely and want to. Mosey on next door to the to the dark fire. There we go. <laughs> All right, Lyle, we've got tournament results as well. I'll go through them sure. real quick. Okay. Out of the MBT Catfish Trail, the official finish from Prairie Creek. We'll go with the top five. In fifth place, we've got Paris and Jackie Nicole at 25.75. Uh, in fourth, we got Debusk and Lockridge at 28.55 pounds. Third place, Richmond Bex and Wallace at 32.16. In second place, we've got Sherman, Abbott, and Abbott with 33.64 pounds. And then in first place, Little Surf Keller at 38.36 pounds. Congratulations. All right. Great tournament. Great time. It is Richard from Fishing and Freedom has joined us. All right, let's get this baby going. Keith. What is your most favorite thing about YouTube? Hmm. I guess. Well, let's put them big like I, guess. I know what he's thinking, but he's not gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably right. Yeah, um, I'm right. I would say that my favorite thing is what caused me to do it to start with, just making videos. I mean, 
the more you do it, the harder it gets and more work you put into it. But I did it for years and was a little bitty channel because I like making the videos. So I guess that's my favorite thing. Editing. I've said that before. Say. Meeting people. I mean, I can go I can go a lot farther, but like making the videos are just fun. Even because because when you do it, don't get no views. That kind of proof that you just like doing it. You know what I mean? But I like now. I like meeting the people. I like like I met Hagen, all you guys. And, I mean, it's all fun now. But I still like making videos, being I'm, creative. I'm guessing if you didn't like making videos, it wouldn't. It'd be more a job than uh, entertainment. Yeah, it kind of feels like a job sometimes now. <laughs> well, <laughs> it gets harder. It does, and the more, the the better you do, the better people expect from you. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, that was going to be my question. When you say it gets harder, why? You know. Well, because like you would think, I always thought, well, this will get easier the better I get, but you kind of put more work into it and put more pressure on yourself to do better. If that makes sense, I don't know. It's like, instead of getting faster at editing, I just, the more I learn, to, the more work I put into it. So it takes longer than it did when I started. But that's what I mean by it gets harder. Okay. But not hard in a bad way. Just, I don't know. Hagen, Hagen can attest to that, I'm sure. Oh, I'm quite yeah. sure. <laughs> what's, Hagen, what's your favorite thing to do about YouTube? Uh, well, it's hard. It's kind of hard to pick one thing, I guess. I guess I'm a little bit different because I didn't mean to start a YouTube channel. It kind of just happened. I, just, I posted a little clip one day, and that's just how it started. I never had any plans on starting a YouTube channel. That's really not my style, you know, but it just kind of... It kind of started there, and I just went with it. it is, um, it's a blessing in disguise that you get to do so much of your stuff with your son, Landon. It is, yeah. That's that's probably my favorite part, now that you say it, is that we get to do it together. Because he kind of enjoys the filming and, you know, get to see his work put together and stuff. And then, you know, it's just it's pretty neat we get to do it together. And you're fishing. And we're fishing. Yeah, that's the main thing. At the end of the day, that, that's, uh, that means a lot. Um, I know that you have more than one boat. Yeah. Now, Josh's wife has no parking spot usually because Josh has a boat park in. Does your Josh wife got a bunch of boats, yeah. don't he? Yeah. yeah. Did your wife get a parking spot? Well, I keep one covered up in the yard, and then I keep one in the barn, so... <laughs> I don't have to affect her too much. <laughs> that's what it, that's what it is. I need a barn. But one of them's normally well, all the time anyway. I'm usually well, working on one of them all the time. Break out another thousand. That's, that's right, especially for. when you got a '88 model outboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Hagen, you said that you put you posted that one little clip, and then it kind of just went from there. What kept you going in it? And I got you to where you're at now. I guess, I mean, I just started, uh, I started seeing, it was, it's kind of neat to see people are in, interested in something you're doing, you know. I'll tell you a funny story. The, the first actual video I ever filmed on purpose, I didn't have any camera mount or anything. I took two pair of vice grips and tried to mount my phone to the bimini top on the boat, and I exploded the screen on my phone <laughs> with those vice grips. And wow. never did get my camera, never did get my camera mount. So that's you know, I know it. Yeah, why guy that can help you with that? Yeah. <laughs> and I still don't use much. You know, it, that's one thing about YouTube. It doesn't take a lot of equipment to get started. Or even now, I don't use everything I've ever edited. It's been on my phone. That's all I use. I mean, I got GoPros and stuff that I use. I, I wear a GoPro for audio, and then I keep a GoPro rolling all the time. But most everything I do is filmed and edited on my phone. So, wow. Really? Not saying it's great, but you know you can get by with it. I, I just can't use a phone for that kind of stuff. 
I, never I, I, I have witnessed him there. try to actually use his phone. He cannot use his phone. Get rid of that flip phone thing and you'll be able to do it. <laughs> I don't have a flip phone, you jackass. <laughs> I think we need to go get him something si you know more simple to use, like, a, well, like an iPhone. Big buttons. Well, yeah, me, I'm thinking a, like I an iPhone. A... Sorry. You a... No, you bought a what? I bought a really nice computer, and I rarely use it. I bought an Apple computer and all that. You know, it's just, I don't know. I just got used to doing it on my phone, and I feel like I can do everything I need to do. So that's They're just I need too small. To, I need to break the app. I got a pretty big phone. <laughs> I got a tablet that's too small. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be hey, I started out with all mm -hmm. ever doing everything, thumbnails, video editing, all that stuff mm -hmm. from my phone. And I've just recently actually started learning to sit down and use an editor. And there it is amazing what the difference of what you actually can do as far as going down the rabbit hole and but I think you could sit there and add a lot of time to to what you're doing. So be ready for that. But it's worth it. I, I can tell a difference in yeah, the oh, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Yeah. I did the yeah. same thing Hagen did. I I bought a computer, spent over a thousand dollars, and then my next three videos I did with my phone because it's just <laughs> hard to switch. Once you're used to it, it's hard. And if I hadn't spent so much money, I'd probably still be using my phone. But I made myself use the computer. Once I once I got used to computer, I like it better than the phone. Well, see, I've got the same editor on my computer as I do on my phone, so I do too. I was, I was like, well, you know, what, what am I really doing here? I'm not really gaining much by using this computer. I already got all this footage on my phone, so. But you're right. I probably could make a little better quality video with the with the computer. It's just something I haven't really worried about yet. Hey, I, I personally like the quality of your videos. I always yeah. go back to Whistling mm -hmm. Diesel if anybody watches him. He got he got up to like five million subs with a with a phone. So I always think oh, about wow. that. <laughs> well, really? he's an exception, obviously, but well, it's nothing wrong with the phones. Yeah, like, the phone's good, but I, I just think it. I think it's easy. There's little things like skipping from frame to frame. You don't have to drag it with your finger. You can just like. There's little things I like about the computer better, I guess. But there ain't nothing wrong with the phone. Did uh, how much did you fifty percent of the uh, hmm? so my computer the computer on the phone the same exact same as the ones on the computer? I think Keith's freezing up. Keith froze Say up. it again. There you go. Okay, are the programs on the phone? The exact same as the ones on the computer. They're pretty close, but there is some differences. In mine, there is. Mine's not. They're just computer program stuff that. Am I still freezing up? Yeah, just a little, little bit. A little bit. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um. Mine does uh. My computer does own did. I it with my phone sometimes. Well, I can there's... see where that'd be handy. I mean, if you knew how to do it, I can see mm -hmm. where it'd be handy. You could do it anytime, any place, anywhere. You wouldn't have to worry about whether you had your computer or if you had a link up or anything like that because phones pretty much, not, not everywhere, but pretty much got service. Most every place. Now, where we're at, as Chad knows, we've fished a couple of places already didn't have any service, but yeah, that's that's just the way it is. Yeah, no, the phone the phones are nice, um, and there's so many different apps that you can use and utilize them together. And even some of the you know recent videos I've done, there's stuff that I've done on my phone and then done more of it on the computer because I could figure it out on the computer. So. Yeah, it's a, I think it's a good way for people to get started. It's kind of the point I was making, you know, because everybody's got a smartphone now, you know, and I think it is a little easier to get started on a smartphone than versus editors on the computer. Uh, North Northwest Open Season says the difference between free editing software and paid software is real. You got to think about the output quality when you export 
not just the editing process. I would agree with that. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes into with all that, but uh, let's go back to the back to them though. Danny Stone says, I had a long conversation with Keith at CatCon. He gave me a lot of good advice. I haven't done any of it, but it was still great advice. Keith is a wealth of knowledge. I don't know, but I love all the still frames, uh, snaps, screenshots people could be grabbing of you right now. <laughs> <clears throat> Not that I've ever done that. Uh -huh. I think a phone, but and it gets you started. Like, I, yeah, that was my last video, I was. Yeah, that was kind of my point. I wasn't saying a phone just as good as a computer. I was just kind of saying, you know, it's a good way to get started. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the way I look at it. But hey, Keith, you might try. Uh, restarting your computer or something to see if you can stop that freezing. I don't know what what you got going on there, but you, sometimes it's real bad. Other times it's not so bad. Okay, might be my internet. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I'll uh, I'll try if you want me to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't hear nothing. And we'll just go back to. I'll be right back. Ask oh, Hagen oh, oh. Okay. Yep. All right. We'll just go back to that for now. Ah, this was all a trap on you, Hagen. Just <laughs> get right. here by yourself. That's all right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to drive. There's still three. There's still three, y'all. So we'll be. All right. <laughs> you're uh, you having the hot weather down there where you're at? As we're having here. Yeah, it's, last week was miserable. It's not been as today was a little bit nicer, but it's been it's been pretty rough. Uh, Jennifer wants to know if your wife fishes with you. Uh, not very often. Every now and then. She's not too much into the catfishing thing. She's more of a, you know, fishing under a bobber kind of for bluegill or something, you know. Yeah. Me too. Oh, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I enjoy it too. It's a lot of fun to hear that. It is. Some good bait too. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that that was my hope. Get deep bluegill fishing so I'd have bait. There you go. Mm-hmm. Now he's get all kinds of stuff, but well, we'll see. You gotta catch something first. Saying about me, let's start. Let's keep it on the mm -hmm. keep it on focus, Mark Junior. <laughs> oh wow! So, <laughs> <laughs> but hey, so obviously, you, we, yeah, you went through like talking about you know you you're editing on your own phone and stuff like that, but. From the time you started to where you're at now, what do you think <clears throat> has gotten you to your nearly near fifty thousand right subscribers getting there? And your view, your your view rate is typically phenomenal. I mean, I, I know I watch everything you put out, but you know, based even based off of your subscriber rate to your number of view rates, you you, know, you mm -hmm. do really really well. What do you think you attribute to all that to besides your son? I think I think just being real is is I mean it's short answer, but I think that's pretty much it. I think you just got to be yourself, and I think some of it's just luck, you know, on how people take it. But uh, just got to be yourself and just roll with it. I've been I've been asked what what is the best advice you can give somebody. I've been I've been asked it a thousand times, and my answer has always been just be yourself. Don't try yeah, to be. Your that yeah. you're not because they'll see right through it. Mm -hmm. They'll see right through it, yeah, for sure. And that, uh, I, I think that's great advice, Hagen. I really do. But what have you got planned coming up that you can tell us? I've, I've got a, uh, I'm gonna, well, first thing, I'm trying to put out more videos. I'm, I'm doing whatever, I'm going to try to do whatever I got to do because, you know, one week turns into two weeks and then three weeks and Next thing you know, it's been a month and I haven't posted the video. I've always, I just never feel like, I don't want to say my videos aren't good enough, but I don't know. Sometimes I, so, I scrap more videos than I post basically because I never feel like what I have is worthy of posting. 
But I'm trying to get out of that a little bit. Like, we went to West Virginia a couple of weeks ago, had a good trip. I just didn't feel like – I mean, we caught fish and everything, but I just – I don't want to put a video out just reeling in fish. You know, when I go out, I'm looking for a specific video. If I don't get it, I usually just scrap it, and I'm trying to get out of that. Do you ever save any of them for a rainy day? I do, yeah, but I never go back and use them. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Do you use the same ones you save back, Keith? Sir, do you do you save back videos and use them later sometimes? I do sometimes. A uh, couple weeks, uh, last month, I don't remember when it was, I did a hack video and I, I had like nine hacks. Because it's hard to know when I'm filming if I got enough footage. You know what I mean? I try to make between a 10 and 12 minute video. And I kind of got to 15 or 17 minutes and I had like four hacks left so I saved them for the next video so I do that occasionally but so, it's just different fishing so <laughs> when you're trying to do a 15 minute video how do you do that when you're sneaking in somebody's backyard using a swimming pool <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that is a <laughs> video <laughs> I mean but, you don't have to do long videos, but you won't watch time. So if you can get a certain amount of time, it's this seems like the video does better to me. But I guess a lot of people do good with short videos. So I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I like them. I try to. I like a twenty minute video, really, or even longer. But they don't always work out like that. No, I, I no. noticed the guys are making longer videos now than they ever did before. I'm I'm sorry about my internet. I think it was my internet. Uh, it's better now. Uh, Doing good. I know exactly what Hagen was saying because I use my phone forever, and I didn't I didn't mean nothing about like one's better than the other. No, but oh, I didn't take but, it that way. No, no, but all I was gonna say was like I was deleting all my stuff because after I'm through editing, I'll go back and delete everything off my computer today, and I had 200 pictures on that video, my last video. 208 pictures i don't know how many video clips and sound effects and stuff like are you i mean i can still edit with my phone but it would just be hard for me now i guess because i'm used to my computer and i do a lot more it just one one's not better than the other it's what you get used to really you could hagen makes great videos i couldn't do it with my phone as good as he does anymore yeah, you could. No, <laughs> can't hardly see the thing anymore. <laughs> I Real, Real's got a question here. He said, "If if you could go back to when you first started and give yourself some advice, what would it be?" Mm. Make the best videos you can make. Like Kagan was saying about scrapping footage, like like be picky. Well, at first, just make videos, get used to it. But me, I would tell myself to make the best videos you can make. And it, it don't it don't have to be perfect. Just, like, really work hard on uh, not making it boring, like keeping people's attention. And make thumbnails, because a lot of people don't make thumbnails. They just use the thumbnail YouTube gives them. That'd be what I did. What'd you do? What would you say, Hagen? I would say... Don't worry so much about catching big fish just to make a video. Because <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. all I cared about when I first started. I thought I had to catch a 50-pounder and nobody was going to watch and I couldn't have been. You know, it's easy because, you know, we're all catfishermen, you know, most of us on here. And it's easy to think that the whole world's looking at these videos like we are. But that's not the case at all, you know. 99% of the world doesn't have a clue what we're talking about when we say bumping for catfish or skipjack fishing, you know. Most people don't know what a skipjack is. They don't know what bumping is. So you got to kind of think big, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And, uh, you know, I still like rotter. I still catfish and everything and do everything the same, but I guess I title things a little bit different now and uh, try to make it easier for the average person to understand it, you know. So looking at like a, like a broader for yeah, a broader yeah. audience type deal. Yeah, just think bigger, you know, because, you know, most people don't know what we know about catfishing. You know, it's still. It's still growing, it's still pretty new. Mm -hmm. I like yep. Pebbles. Pebbles' yeah. idea there. To get more ideas from his wife. 
Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. She it's might have my... added, she might have added and listened more closely. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, that's a something triggered my brain when Hagen was talking because me and Hagen's been friends for several years. Like since 2020, 2019, maybe. 2019, probably, yeah. But I remember, like, I didn't teach Hagen nothing. He was good at YouTube. No, you, he, he, he taught me a lot. Yeah. No, I ain't, I ain't take, saying that, <laughs> but did. I remember one time several years ago, he he put a video out, and I was like, man, don't call that that. And he was like, what? And it said something Ohio River. And that's a yep. tip for anybody. Like, there's 8 million catfishermen in America, I think they say, and and there's more around the world. Like, there's there's a, you know, I can't even think of the name of them, the red tips and the whales. Red tails, yeah. All those. So those people over there, they don't know what the Ohio River is, and they don't care. And you want a million views. You don't want a thousand views. So think, think bigger, like worldwide. Does that make sense? Like, Yeah, that's what I was Call it catfish, yeah. not not catching catfish in Ohio. The Ohio River is irrelevant. Leave that out. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. people in Australia don't know what the Ohio River is. But everybody knows what a catfish is. Does that make sense? It does to me. Yes, sir. Am I freezing up? No, you're good. <laughs> But let's go back to like the the video timing, or you know how long of, of a video, right? And, uh, because this question kind of talks about that. Uh, what do you guys think of these channels posting one hour videos? Who has time to watch those? You know that sort of thing. So, mm. what what are your guys' thoughts on the right length video, or even to this question, is an hour too long for a video? I mean. I know people that sit here and binge watch NCIS for two weeks straight, um, and they'll watch hour-long episodes. So why can't they watch ours? Right? Just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. But what you're all thoughts? Uh, you go I think that if you can keep it interesting for an hour, that it, there's nothing wrong with it. But it, you know, it's it's probably going to be really hard to make an hour-long fishing video, interact. You know, keep it interesting for an hour, unless you're doing a lot of different things in that video. <laughs> Sure. He took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say the same thing. Like, dude, you need to make the best video possible. Like, the time's irrelevant. If you can make a really good one hour video, great. But most people can't do it. So, and, and watch time's important. Like, if you can get them to watch 30 minutes of a one hour video, then you've done really good. And, and watch time's not just what they watch on that video. If, the, if I post a 15 minute video and they watch, all 15 minutes, and then they click on another one of my videos and watch 10 minutes, and another video and watch 10 minutes. That's 35 minutes of watch time because all that goes together on YouTube. Like binge watching is a thing. So, watch time is the most important thing, really. But if, like Hagen said, if you can make a good one hour video, make a good one hour video. But it's probably hard. Curtis Montgomery says, for Hagen, I really like how you explain how you're fishing. Do you plan a trip to video or just record everything? Uh, a little bit of both. I don't plan what I'm going to say. Like, I don't write a script or anything like that. But I kind of know what I, I – I can make a lot better video if I kind of know what I'm going to talk about and what the video is going to be about. And that's something Keith kind of taught me back when, when I was getting started, you know, kind of go out there with a the plan. And uh, it definitely turns out better every time. I really like to know what my thumbnail and title is going to be before I film the video. That makes a big difference. Instead of getting your video done and just trying to throw a thumbnail on it, you know. If you've already got that thumbnail pinned down, it makes things go a whole lot smoother. So you, you make your thumbnail... Well, yeah. not always. Like, if we just go fishing, like, if we just got up in the morning and went fishing and just, you know, I wouldn't do that. But, like, some videos, I'll think of a good thumbnail idea, and then I'll try to make a video more around that almost. That's a good idea. I, I don't know anybody that's ever 
mentioned anything quite quite like that. So yeah, that, that sounds like pretty cool. All my videos are playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard to play in fish. I wish I could. I wish I could play in what I was going to go out there and catch, and that'd make things a whole lot easier, wouldn't it? Yeah. But well, as far mine's, as off, mine's off the hip too, but I'm making stuff, so I kind of know what I'm doing before I start. That makes sense. I have to know what I'm doing. Yes, fishing's harder. Yeah, yeah. Fishing's pretty, fishing can be pretty tough. Especially if they're spawning or not biting or can't get bait yeah. or yeah. whatever whatever the issue is. But you know, it's not like the the TV shows that do a thirty minute show. Most of those are scripted from beginning right. to end. Yeah, and it's be hard for you or me or any of us, I think, to script a show and go out and film it and try to hold on to a script. Well, these guys getting guides and professionals to take them out and do what they and they got a pretty good idea what's going to happen before they ever get there. Well, I mean, like David Martin saying here, I like the ones where they take you with them from start to end, like an adventure. You know, have yep. no issue watching an hour long type of those. So, so for somebody like Hague, you know, you are uh, you're fit, you're showing actual more fishing videos where Keith is showing DIYs and you know all that sort of thing. But for a fishing video, when you are playing it, how do you how is your thought process on on something like that? Are you trying to make it you know that trip and adventure type or what? Yeah, for sure. I like the adventure stuff. I definitely try to make it feel like somebody's going fishing with me the best I can, the best the way I know how, you know. His last video was a great example of that. Mm -hmm. Like, it was really good the beginning. I was telling him on the phone, like, how good it, I thought it was. And that, not to interrupt Keith, but that last that last question for, that was for me, the, where he said, do you plan what you're going to talk about or whatever? Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily plan it, but I never stop thinking about my next video, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to It never stops. It drives me crazy, but I think about it all the time. <laughs> so I guess I kind of plan it, and, you know, if you think about it like that. Well, that's cool. And I never I never get everything I want to get in a video either. Like, I'll, I'll start editing and be like, man, I forgot to talk about that. I forgot to talk about this, you know. I don't think there's ever a perfect video. You just kind of kind of get tired of working on them at some point, post. <laughs> I, one of my favorite videos that you did that really didn't have a lot of fishing in it was the one about the uh, bait tank. Oh, really? Yeah, it done pretty good. Well yeah. done. I, I really which, thought it was well done. Which bait tank? Which one was it? The uh, mower. The mo Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the one that done pretty good, yeah. Yeah, that's, that yeah. was a great video. It was very informative, and, and you hit all the points that need to be talked about and and didn't go on with it but some of these guys they carry on about stuff that's impertinent to this topic yeah and that it's, had, easy, it's easy to do that well it is that, that video was was really well done it had all the points made that needed to be made and, and not a bunch of uh democrat stuff i appreciate it thirsty are you <clears throat> yeah <laughs> can I, if I can bring up something funny, not my cake is mad, but we was talking. You ain't gonna make me mad. <laughs> it's talking, it's talking it takes a lot. Years ago, and uh, he went fishing. I was making a video, and I was talking to him on the phone, and he went fishing, and he said, "Man, I lost my new cast net." And I was like, "Really?" And he said, "Yeah, the brand new one I just bought." And I was like, "Man, it stinks." And he said. <laughs> He said it was stuck on the root, and I could see it. He said I was so mad. He was just talking about it. And I said, did you film it? And he said, no. <laughs> and I was like, man, that's the best content of that whole yeah. video. You let it go. He yep. said, I'm so mad. I didn't even think about it. And that's really where a good video, that separates a good video from an okay video. Yeah. Now, it, you're talking about sticking that on the roof? It's kind of like Dockery beating the hell out of Dockery with his fishing rod, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> he, stuck, he stuck it on a root. 
under the water. He said, I could see it and I couldn't get it. You remember, <laughs> Hagen. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've done that a lot. Yeah. But that's good content. Like, people don't think to film their screw ups. I love filming screw ups. Like, I think uh, it goes back to what uh, Hagen was saying, though. It, we're minded of thinking we got to show the biggest fish in the, in the river mm -hmm. or lake. That's what our goal is, and it's not always the case. That's not what most people want to see. I, I mean, we uh, do as catfishermen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I don't think uh, I don't think that's why a lot of people watch. I really don't. I could be wrong, but that's just I don't think that's why yeah. most people watch. I think a lot of a lot of the uh, viewers would rather see you catch fish, whether they're big or small, as long as you're catching them. Yeah. Yeah, I've missed some big opportunities on things that I should have filmed looking back, and and I did. I do it. I still do it. I miss stuff all the time, but that's the best stuff. Like we did the bluegill trap, me and David, and we really thought somebody stole that trap, and he was really mad, and I was filming it and laughing and. And, and you know he was like I want he couldn't talk because he wanted to cuss and I was filming him and it was hilarious and he and then he called his son and said did you move that trap and his son said no but on the video I put I put him on the phone that said nine one one what's your emergency <laughs> <laughs> like that was the best content the whole video and it was absolutely real. it wasn't it wasn't made up or nothing it was real it was funny. <laughs> We broke down one night on the Ohio River down in Brandenburg, and uh, the wiring harness shorted out on my white boat. I had, it was right after I got it. I'd been having problems with it, breaking down. I couldn't figure out what it was, and uh, it ended up being the wiring harness, and I replaced it. But anyways, it shorted out. We were dead in the water, couldn't do anything. And uh, here comes this big storm rolling, and I'm talking about, that. I'm talking about mm -hmm. nasty. And... Uh, we were stranded out there. We went up. The waves were getting bigger and bigger, you know, against the current. And, man, it was pretty wild. And I didn't film anything, you know. Somebody come ended up, somebody ended up coming and ended up rescuing us at, like, midnight. And we were out there for, like, five hours in that weather. And that would have been an epic video, probably, if I'd have filmed it all. And I didn't even turn the camera on. <laughs> I was trying to survive, I guess. <laughs> but that one video where you about went in the dam and you told me, I wish the camera would have been turned the other way because you couldn't see how close you was. I know. I was, I was up in it. That's, you know, that's not, you know, we don't think it's a very big deal. You know, we always run right up to the dam, but when your motor ain't running, that's a bad film. That's something yeah. to talk about, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Done that. Danny Stone says, I never try to make thumbnails. What is a user friendly, dumb hillbilly app for making thumbnails? <laughs> I use Photoshop. It's pretty simple the way mm -hmm. I the way I use it. I I don't say I use Canva for a lot of my stuff, but I use like three things. But my favorite is uh, Pixel Lab, but it's not user friendly. It took me a couple of years to learn how to use it. But I use my my editor has a photo. It's, I use Power Director. And it has photo director, and I use it a lot. It's kind of like Photoshop. Now, there used to be one on iPhone that was, you talk about user friendly. I mean, it basically done everything for you, but they discontinued it. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm doing anything, but I still had it on there. Well, isn't that what happens, though? Stuff that you really like, it gets this. Oh, it, goes away. it goes yeah. away. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's how it seems to work. Yeah. That's a fact. Hey, Brad, thanks for joining us tonight. Mark wants to know if you uh, have any advice for someone who films solo. Buy a new boat. That's a good question. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I mean, yeah, I do it sometimes whenever Landon can't go. I just, I use my chest camera footage. I use a little bit more of that. And then I just uh, try to mount. It's good if you can mount like two cameras on you to have two different angles to go back and forth. But uh, you just got to do the best you can. It's not as easy. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah, if you open by yourself, it's kind of difficult. But yeah. the more more cameras you got, the better yeah. off you That's are. That's big difference, Mike. Yeah, more, more, more chance of getting a good shot that way. So, But you can do it with one camera. I mean, 
Yeah. There's a lot of people that, that's got big channels that, that use one camera only and fish by themselves, you know. Yep. yep. You need to move, have more angles. Like, to edit, I guess. Angles matter. Changing angles a lot. Yes. Which is easy. You know, three different angles and it's like three four different shots yeah mm -hmm. yeah these things changing yeah mm -hmm. it makes a difference <laughs> doc we always film pro yeah he does yeah he does but yeah jerry's right so 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 filming can be a pain it, just depends on um, what you're looking for and trying to get out of your videos. But like I say, if you if you're going to be doing it by yourself, two, three yeah. cameras make a world of difference with big cards in them. And that's, then, that's where that's where that's where looping really comes in handy. It does if you don't forget to shut them off and start you have back. To remember, you have to remember to shut it off because you. Because if you don't, you lose it all. I set and my loop to twenty minutes, and now if. You know, if I catch a fish or something happens, I'm saying I want to keep that piece of footage. And I just walk around the boat and I shut all of them off or restart them all. And I'm on the next loop. So there you go. That's good. Good advice. Good advice. Well, no, any, anybody has any questions in chat for these guys now is the time to get them out. Here's Bill Wright's fishing. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Oh, yeah, Creole's got a real good comment. He said, it's tough when there's other people in the boat, but you're the only one filming or who understands how to film. Said lots of block shots and bad angles. That's right. I don't even, yes. I don't even try. Yeah. I tried it one time. I don't try anymore. <laughs> so, sometimes those are fun, though. You take somebody that's not used to being on camera, and you can end up with a real good video like that. Yeah, I, I did the right last person, year. yeah. <laughs> I did one last year. Now, I had to do a lot of cutting on my buddy because he, he was using a lot of language and I didn't want on my video. But Really? Is that the bass fisherman that you took? That's the bass uh, fisherman. Yeah, yeah, that's like yeah. the bass fisherman catfishing. And he's, I was like, if we get into fish, we'll go live. And we, we were slaying him. He's like, we're going to go live? I said, no. I, said, I, I, I like my channel too much to go live right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, things happen, but, um, you know, it is what it is. I had a question about two minutes ago, and I forgot what it was already. Boy. I'm so I'm so starstruck with having somebody like Keith and Hagen on here that... Well, yeah. Oh, my God. It's like two <laughs> legends. No, I don't know about that, man. Man. I mean, well, I've got, you know... Maybe Keith. And, well, I've I'll got Keith who's... Yeah, well, I got Keith, who was second place to me in a fishing tournament, and you're like the second best fisherman in Kentucky next to me. So, <laughs> oh, um, oh my I just God. don't know where to go with this. Take him fishing, Megan. Goddamn. You're right. Take him fishing, Josh. <laughs> he needs to be humble a little bit. <laughs> oh, I'll take him down the Kentucky River down here. I'll humble him. Yeah, I'm hovering over that mute button, Miles. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah, actually, the Kentucky River used to be where I fished the majority of the time when I was younger. Uh, bank oh, really? stuff down there. Yeah, down there at the Mount, like Harrelton and the Mount oh, of Harrelton, yeah, Lock One, Two, Three. That's, that's you catching Ohio I've, River fish down there now. That's oh, listen, Ohio River. You, there ain't no fishing at Ohio River. That's why yeah, we don't really title our good. videos Ohio River. <laughs> yeah. the Ohio River, you just gotta learn how to catch them. But no, I've not really, I haven't really fished the Kentucky River much past that. I think I fished uh, down around Frankfurt one time, but that was about yeah. That's it. I'm not too far from Frankfurt. Yeah, yeah, about thirty minutes south. Yeah, Where'd it's not a bad river, but uh, it's it's really tricky because the whole thing's covered in timber, so it's oh, all yeah. the same. Everything's every the whole bottom of the river is covered in timber, so it's pretty tricky to fish. Well, I'm where, sure I can. Where did you catch that eighty-eight, Hagen? On the Ohio River. Yeah, Chad just don't know how to fish it. God, I, I wish I could find you that. Now, that was luck. I mean, I'll be the first to tell you that was luck. That's, I, that, think that, I think once you get over 50 pounds, most of it is up, luck baby. after that. Yeah. <laughs> Keep on talking, Hagan. There we go. We can go straight into 
<laughs> how bad the, the Ohio River is compared to all these other areas. Oh, it is, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, it takes I mean, good. that's that's the key to catching big fish is fishing where they live, no doubt. Yeah. That's yeah, the right, no doubt. Yeah. And it's it can be tough. There's some good sections in it, but there's a lot of dead water. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you want to catch big fish in the Ohio River, my advice would be fish as close to the Mississippi as you can. That's a good stretch right no there. Western, yeah. You know? yeah. That is a real good stretch right down there. Yeah. yeah you know all about it now. That is, that is my, that's my home waters right there. I know so. it. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, blue. That's, the, that's the key to, to catching giants. And it's not that there ain't some big ones in throughout the Ohio River because every year there's two or three big ones caught in different parts of the Ohio River. But oh, yeah. your, your odds are better closer to Mississippi you get. But, you know, they don't do something about some of these regulations that they have in some of these other states. That ain't going to matter one of these days. Yeah, it's a, it's a mess as far as that goes for sure. We'll get I got a question for you guys. What do you do with your scrap footage? The stuff that, hey, I went out and recorded this trip and it probably ain't going to be able to make a video out of it. Is it gone? Do you keep it for later? What do you I do that a lot because I don't, I'm, I've scrapped more than I might. But if there's something, that, if there's something in there that, that I think I could use, I'll hang on to it normally, but I get rid of most of it myself. As far as fishing content goes now, certain things I'll keep, but as far as right. fishing content, I normally get rid of it. I, I thought I had a, it. Thought I had a hard drive going bad earlier this year and got rid of a bunch of footage and it it bothered me at first and I realized this stuff was like three and four years old and I said if I haven't made a video out of it by now it's probably not going to happen. So that's what I do. I usually hang on to it for a while and then well, and I let go of it after a while. Well, like, is there anything like even like little sections of funny stuff that you maybe clip out? Oh yeah, think he because I, I just thought yeah, that'd be a good idea instead I do of that what one. you're saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. I go through a lot of it and pick out. If there's something in there I remember that happened that I want to keep, yeah, I definitely I got a lot of that stuff put back. I want to do a blooper video one day. They don't do that good, but I think it'd be fun. They're fun. They're fun to make, but yeah, yeah. they don't they don't perform real well. They'll dance them real well. Once Keith makes them, then they'll do good. If Keith does one, then then yeah. <laughs> all Keith needs to do is a blooper video, and then get that hit that algorithm, and the rest of ours will do all right. That's yeah, right. There you go. He's getting, I you got did three. Out. I got three blue videos. Ain't none of them do good. <laughs> yeah. That's for ours. That's for your subscribers only. Yeah. Mm -hmm. your, your viewers only. Yeah. New there. people have never seen you before. Don't right there. There's a good one. Huh. Oh, my goodness. We was talking about that the other day. I know we've been, we've been planning and doing that about as long as I've been planning on coming on live stream here. <laughs> <laughs> We done this. We'll have to go to Tennessee now. There you go. <laughs> well, yeah. Keith could, Keith could definitely. Come to Lake Wiley. I think Lake Wiley. Come to Lake Wiley. I don't know. You might have to meet me halfway in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tennessee is halfway. That's right. That's why we was going to do it. You can't. It's hard to beat that Tennessee River. Yeah, it's a long way to Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. It is a long way from you. And Keith only has a once a, a once a year season pass into Kentucky, so we he has to pay extra if he wants to come here and fish with us. So just remember that. But he, he really could he really could use you to you know take him down to the Tennessee River and show him how to become a champion again. <laughs> he talks a lot of crap. <laughs> I beat him. I beat him the second tournament we was in. The first one we was in, I hadn't fished in a year. I do DIYs. I don't get to go fishing. Yeah, you don't get to fish. <laughs> get to fish. I got a brand new boat. I just changed the motor, and it's like four years old. I just changed the oil in it. <laughs> it took me four yeah. years to get twenty get hours life on. together. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! That's hey, uh, Josh, do you have a uh, little something something for us this evening? Well, that 
could go any direction there. <laughs> we do have a bragging board, though, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, let's go, let's go with that direction. I'll yeah, go with the cool. bragging board on it. Or I've got a video with Dockery hitting a dock roof. I mean, which which one do you want? That's always well, funny. Both. <laughs> All right, let's go with the bragging board. Okay. Howdy, folks. It's time once again to take a look at the Catfish Weekly Bragging Board for the week of July the 31st, 2023. Up first, we have Richard from Fishing and Freedom with a really nice flathead catfish. It's an excellent fish, excellent picture, Richard. Thank you. Up next, our buddy Sean Fitzgibbon sent us a picture of his friend's very first blue catfish, a 34-pound blue cat caught at Kerr Lake. That's a heck of a way to catch your first blue. Congratulations. Up next, we have Pontoon Jody with a largemouth bass caught while she was out catfishing. She said this thing bit on a 10 aught circle hook and a piece of skipjack. Guess he was hungry. Either way, nice fish, Jody. Now, Mr. Lyle Stokes of Catfish Weekly and Panfish Nation sent us in these pictures. Said it's hard work to catch dockery-sized fish like these, but Lyle made it look easy. Congratulations, buddy. Our buddy Jerry from Parker Pursuits with a 54-pound blue cat caught while out fishing with his daughter the other night. Excellent fish, Jerry. Congratulations. Finishing up tonight, we have Mr. Danny Stone of Danny Stone Outdoors with an awesome piebald catfish he caught the other day during a live. Danny said he wanted to catch that fish in honor of our good buddy Kenneth Powell, who's going through some medical issues right now. Don't forget, you too can be featured on the Catfish Weekly Bragging Board. To be eligible, the fish needs to have been caught within the past 14 days, but we accept pictures of any species of fish. Send the information shown on your screen to picks at theweekendangler.com. We'll get you put up on the Catfish Weekly Bragging Board. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Have a great week. Very well done, Josh. I was actually finishing up. You did. That's that. a good voice. Though, man. That was going. Kentucky field quality. I felt like I was watching Kentucky field. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is a compliment. I like watching them. So. Yeah, I do too. Like, yeah. They have dockery size fish. They are dockery size. <laughs> dockery size fish. <laughs> yeah, I, for, I forgot to send you my first, uh, my first ever fly. Uh, fish and catch, man. I should have done that. Oh, yeah, you need to well, send that. It takes a, it's a lot harder to catch some dockery sized fish than it is the bigger one. You're not it's wrong. Like, it's kind of like shooting a 22 <laughs> rifle at a mosquito. It's a lot harder to hit that mosquito than it is a housefly. <laughs> wow. Oh, Lordy. Oh, from Creel, YouTubers and places you'd like to fish. That's a great one. Tennessee. I missed it. What was it? Uh, <laughs> you, YouTubers and, and or places that you'd like to fish. You, I guess YouTubers you'd want to fish with or... Uh... Hagen on the Tennessee River. There you there go. You go. <laughs> that work? Yeah, well, I've already been. I've, I've fished the Tennessee a bunch. So if I had to pick a place I'd want to fish, I want to fish more. I want to fish the Mississippi in a good stretch. That's a real good place to fish. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I want to have that good straight current. 
so I can agree. Well, yeah. with you. I love fishing in Mississippi below Saint below the Alton Dam, and I like fishing in Memphis. Yeah, two of my favorite places. If I had to choose, one, yeah, if you had to choose one, which one? It would be Saint Louis. I was gonna say I'm pretty. I'm not too far from Saint Louis. About yeah. five hours. Yeah, that's not too bad. You're probably you're probably closer to Memphis, ain't you? I don't think so. It's really. I think there's a bit. I think I'm closer to Saint Louis. I could be wrong, but I think it's about seven hours at Memphis. Well, they're both great places. You have to double check that. I think Creole's got a pretty good spot down there by him, but he's he's spoiled down there. He's got it made. Yeah, he does. He is. I have not been there though. I haven't either, but I've heard about it. Caught on an eight aught rig you sent me. Well, that's awesome, man. On a live Stokes rig too. So, congratulations, buddy. Do your Creole imitation, Hagen. Skip no, Jack. Skip Jack. <laughs> oh, Good. Slicker? Yeah, we. I, yeah, well, Slicker. Hey, <laughs> when, when I go to, because uh, I'd never heard of it before, so it threw me for a loop. We we died. But when I, that's what I got him saved in my phone as Slicker, and that's what we call him now. We call him Slick. Me, me, Dad, and Landon, we all call him Slicker now. That's the only thing we ever call him. <laughs> My my son in law, my daughter's in Louisiana, and my son in law's from there. And they, I was talking about crappy. They said, "Do it." <laughs> what was what, what's the word that he's? I can't think of it. Now. Is it sacolay? Sacolay. Sacolay. He's like, we like fishing for sacolay, and that's like, what is that? <laughs> that's what they call crappy. Sounds better than crappy. Yeah, yeah, it does. Sound better it than does. Crappy. No, nah, I'm messing. I wanted to get that war started between crappie and crappy, but it didn't work. That's what <laughs> makes you want to eat them, dog. Crappy. Hey, crappy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, as long as they taste like they do, I'll keep eating them. I don't care what you call them. <laughs> I will, too. <laughs> they are great. Keith Hagen, thank you guys so much for joining us in here tonight. This has been one of the greatest shows that we've done in a long time. And uh, I appreciate you guys both being in here tonight. I appreciate you uh, having me on here. It took a long time, but we got it done. We did. We need, yeah. we need to set up another one before you change your mind. <laughs> it, went, it did go by pretty quick, didn't it? It, it did. You know, and, um, I feel like we covered a whole lot, but we'll have to do it again. We will. We, and we're, we'll be happy to have you on anytime. Of course, Keith, is, Keith has an open Anytime he wants to be on here, all he's got to do is send one of us a message. Yeah, especially if he wants to make fun of Chad, we'll just put him. I, I was gonna say out. he's less likely to get timed out up here on panel than he is, you know, down here in chat. I am making time. Oh hush, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we got to fi- no. We're fixing that. There you I go. tried, and then you keep touching buttons. <laughs> Look at that face! <laughs> oh wow, that's a gr- I wish that's that was a, a little bit clearer. That would have been that would have been. Oh, really that would have nice. been a good good screenshot. So that would have been great. But no, yeah, Hagen, I'm I'm glad we've you know finally got you on here, man. Yeah, it was a good time, man. Well, thank, like I said, thank y'all for having me on here, and we'll have to do it again. Believe me, it was our pleasure to have you on here, and like I say, we we'd love to have you back on again sometime, and. And uh, we just we just have fun. I mean, that's that's what. You yeah, do. We can, maybe we can talk about fishing next time. That'd probably be more my style. When if you want to do a show and talk about fishing, let's do that. Yeah. Let's make her happen. Yeah, sounds like a plan. In the meantime, if you'll hang tight with us just a second here, we're going to get out of here because Mark has got Betty Jean on tonight, and uh, they had a big weekend plan uh, with them. And we don't want to hold them guys up. So, uh, Josh, you and uh, Chad got anything to close out with? Uh, not the only thing I think I have is we will have cool cats catfishing over on Fields to Water on the bait shop on Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's all I got. Yeah. All right. I think we're good for the week. So. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next week right here on Catfish Weekly. Have a great week, everybody. Take care, everybody.